Are you in your mid 30s to mid 50s looking for the most effective way to improve your physical health and fitness then be able to run faster for longer? Have you heard about the math training but are hesitant to try it due to mixed reviews? My name's David and I'm the Plant Powered Runner. Well, as someone who has tried and tested the math training, I'm here to give you an inside scoop on whether it's really worth your time and effort. I have to be honest, the Maffetone method almost broke me, but I discovered something that really did make it work. And I'll share that later on in today's video. But don't worry, I'm not here to bash the math training completely. After all, Maffetone method isn't some gimmicky or get quick scheme Dr. Phil Maffetone created. There's a lot of valuable lessons to be learned from Dr. Phil Maffetone's book. And there have been plenty of athletes who have seen incredible results from his methods and his trainings. So in today's video, I'm diving into the ins and outs of math training and explore what we can gain from the understanding and principles behind it so you can be effective, faster runner and healthier runner. So if you're ready to take your physical fitness to the next level and avoid the pitfalls I encountered with the math training, join me as we explore the world of math training. Maffetone method uses 180 minus your age to calculate your heart rate that you should be using for all of your runs while you are building your aerobic base. I've made lots of videos on the topic and I've created a couple of playlists for you that you could watch after you watch this video on my YouTube channel. The one thing that saved my training from going in the toilet, I'll be talking about later on in today's video, and it's gonna be shocking for some of you. So here we are, consistently feeling fatigued, struggling to see improvements in our running, picking up an injury once again, or not being consistent, or just generally feeling not your best. If so, then you've come to the right place. Today we'll be talking about what the Maffetone method can teach you and how it can revolutionize your training and your life, along with some things that you may have not thought about in the past. First of all, let's talk about aerobic versus anaerobic training. Dr. Phil Maffetone explains that your training can be fueled in two ways. Aerobic exercise as fat burning and anaerobic as sugar burning. However, this is an oversimplification as the aerobic system is a mix of fats and sugars. While it is possible to build an aerobic system that is burning high levels of sugar, pure fat burning is challenging to achieve without careful consideration of your diet. Fat burning, fat burning is only required for long distance events lasting longer than one to one and a half hours such as a 20 mile race, marathons, ultras. Therefore, if you're running middle distance, like park runs of 10K, fat burning isn't going to improve your race times, or is it? Look, I've been training using the Maffetone method for like two years now, and the very first year that I started to use it, I really saw some great results. And so in the time that I trained, I was able to get faster at the same low heart rate over a period of time. So this example does work. There's a number of components that has to come into play if you're going to see the long-term, if you're gonna see the results. The big caveat is everybody is different. As runners, we know that, but we like to compare each other to everybody else. And that's a no-no. Now let's talk about warm-ups. Dr. Phil Maffetone devotes a section of the book getting athletes to spend at least 12 minutes warming up. Generally, warm-ups are one of the most underrated things in distance training. Most people start their runs too quickly and then slow down to a pace which feels comfortable. The problem is, by starting off too fast, we activate a lot of the anaerobic sugar burning muscle fibers which cause a high heart rate and if you start to run slowly you only use many of many of the muscle fibers you need to get the job done which is your slow twitch fiber muscles which allows you to run more easily sometimes if i don't do a warm-up my heart rate starts to rise and it starts to get to levels of like 180 beats a minute and sometimes i'm sitting there going what is going on i literally am only 400 meters into my run right now and my heart rate is shooting through the roof. I'm not running fast. What's happening to me? And I start to panic. My body's not quite ready to start running yet. And I'm getting inaccurate results from my chest strap or my heart rate monitor. It takes a little bit of time for your body to warm up to kind of get into the running zone. So that's why doing 12 minutes of a warm up. Uh, is really important to kind of stabilize your heart rate. So that way, when you do your heart rate training, you're gonna start seeing accurate results and not these false flags that are gonna start alerting your watch to go crazy and you to go spiraling. 
Have you ever heard that running your easy runs too fast is the number one mistake runners make? Even elite athletes can do it and send themselves into a spiral of overtraining and underperforming. If you pay attention to how easy your low heart rate training runs feel, then you'll be able to begin to understand just how easy they need to be. Remember, easy is a feeling, not a pace. Now the Maffetone method also helps with the obesity crisis that we seem to be facing in our day and age. When you consider that there's a sizable proportion of the population who don't regular exercise and they get out of breath quickly, this leaves them hungry and prone to eating quick fix sugary foods to satisfy their appetite. Maffetone training can, uh, can teach you much about the aerobic and anaerobic training, the importance of warming up and how to run at the right pace and achieve the best results. It's a lifestyle that can help you feel better, perform better, and even lose weight. For all of you car buffs out there, you know that when you put fuel in your car, the performance of it changes. So if you put in just the regular unleaded stuff, your, your performance is going to be just average. But if you put in the higher grade gas, then you know that all of a sudden your car is a little bit peppier. It can go a little bit further with the performance, with the tires, with everything else. Maffetone method and heart rate training is kind of like that, right? So if you are using the Maffetone method and you're like, okay, I'm going to use this method and I'm going to train for it. Uh, for you know a year you look you're gonna get faster okay you will but wait it's not all sunshine and rainbows for everyone that uses the math tone method firstly the science behind the age-related formula used in the math training is debatable while the human body declines with aging it is not so abruptly that at 40 years old needs to train at 20 beats slower than a 20 year old and at close to age of 50 i'm running anaerobically at 150 where the formula predicts i should run quicker at 130. To get an accurate number of where your zones are, specifically with heart rate, the one thing that you would want to do is go in for a lab test and you can see exactly where your zones are. Or you could do tests uh, to figure that out uh, on the track. There are different ways of knowing where your maximum heart rate is and not just relying on age. Sure, anaerobic energy enables you to hit your top speeds, but training aerobic anaerobically can increase the acidicity of your body and requires more energy and it takes a while to flush it out. It can also create poor sleep, bad eating habits. Understanding that too much anaerobic training at the expense of aerobic training is an important concept to grasp. This is where Maffetone comes in. Maffetone low heart rate training proposes is more of a 100% ratio than the 80-20 rule. Do you know about the aerobic anaerobic threshold? Scientists will tell you that there is no definable threshold where you cut over from aerobic to anaerobic. Whether there are times when it's clear that you're relying on one type more than the other, this is where maffetone training comes in and it aims to bring down the reliance on anaerobic training, which can improve performance. But the thing to remember is that you will most likely be using a mix of both fuel sources and that's okay. Some people have pointed out Paula Radcliffe approached the age of 30. She set the world record for the women's marathon which is a run entirely using the aerobic energy. She ran at heart rates of greater than 180 beats a minute, whereas MAF would have restricted her to 160 to 165. And it's crucial to consider how limiting it can be for an older runner to train at 120 to 130 beats a minute. Here's the big thing you need to know. Maffetone training is for training, not racing. You're not racing using this number. This is how you train. When you go out and race, you race, you run fast. I know a lot of fast twitch runners find it challenging to adapt to math training. And look, slow twitch muscle is better suited for aerobic exercise, while fast twitch muscle is more efficient anaerobically and needs more extensive development to improve. Additionally, fast twitch muscle is less efficient than slow twitch muscle. After taking a few months away from fast running, my math training progress would often increase at the expense of my fast twitch muscles. While fast twitch runners are better suited for sprints and shorter distance events, it's possible to build a good aerobic base with fast twitch muscle, though it requires more effort, higher heart rate. Research has shown that, lo that you lose a higher ratio of fast twitch muscle fibers relative to slow, slow twitch muscle fibers as you age. This means that your strength and power capabilities decline more in your endurance skills as the years pass. And yes, that matters, which makes it even easier to adapt 
to math training. In contrast, slow twitch runners may benefit from math training as they naturally run with a low heart rate and may struggle to get to the top end speed if they don't train the fast twitch muscles to get them ready to race. Look, this is a reminder that 100% math training does not equal the fastest you can run. You have to first build an aerobic base first, then you can start adding in some tempos and threshold runs that will look more like 80 slow and 20 fast. It's likely that if you're trying to run below or at your math number as a beginner runner, you will quickly be exceeding it even at the slowest pace. Remember when starting out with this method, you might have to just start running at the slowest pace you can and ignore your heart rate while you add in some easy walk breaks every few minutes or just run while talking to yourself out loud and see if you can hold or keep a conversation for two to three miles and see how that works. Getting stuck on your math number and not doing the activity you want to do can be very hard on the ego. It might take you a few weeks or months to be able to run at that math number. So relax and try to enjoy the process. Math training says nothing about volumes of training. While the book focuses on the intensity of your runs, it doesn't give any concrete information about how much training you should be doing. It only talks about it in broad terms, about like less is more. Over the past few years using the math tone method, I did too much relative to my ability with upwards to 14 to 18 hours each week. But I read elsewhere that low heart rate training allows you to do as much as you want. Turns out I simply didn't need to be doing that much training. I cut it down to 12 to 10 to 12 and that worked great for a few months while I built my aerobic base. Then I was able to switch to 80, 20 and do some thresholds and tempo run. How much you should do is depending on what your body can take. When you're beginning, you only need relatively short amount of runs to create a training effect. A couple of hours spent out, uh, spread out through the week will have a big impact. Now the one thing that saved my math training is not something I have talked about before. The Maffetone method is not a speed system. It is about creating speed endurance at the same heart rate. Math training promises to get you running faster at the same heart rate, and it also helps you to run longer distances faster. Look, depending on how much volume you run will determine how fast you can run at the same heart rate for a given distance. I'm not saying that you'll be able to run one mile all out in nine minutes. However, math training will simply enable you to build the endurance to do a park run or a 10K at this heart rate. And you might be able to run a mile faster at the same heart rate if you've been consistent with your training. How long it takes depends on the runner. And we all know we're different. If you're trying to compare speed training to base building, just stop it right now. These are two types of different training as I see it. Look, I'm no coach, however, starting with your base and then moving on with 80-20, then you'll be able to run your race fast. It's very true that if you only ever do low heart rate training, you're eventually gonna come up against a brick wall of no improvements and you're gonna plateau. And if this happens, you know you need to switch to 80-20 like I did. I did that for a month and I saw my math pace increase and I was able to continue base building for a while longer. The reason for the improvement was I, I had a few workout speed sessions and because I went all out on those 800 meter repeats and my tempo runs, my naturally fast twitch muscle fibers kicked in and lo and behold, it kind of kickstarted my system. Look, much like you, I'm a busy dude. I got a family, a full-time job, and I'm looking to slowly build my base, run faster, be able to run longer, stay injury free, not get so tired, don't get injured, you know, improve my mental health and look, maybe lose a little bit of weight along the way. If you never work on your speed side, you're never going to reach your absolute potential. Maffetone does allow for some anaerobic interval workouts, but, if you only, but you'll only know this if you read the book. There's not much details on the intervals and the speeds workouts or how they relate to different race distances. But overall, the Maffetone method is a powerful approach to training. And look, it can help you achieve your fitness goals and live a healthier lifestyle. As I continue to build my base, I'm gonna take you along with me and let's see how we improve together. If you wanna see results, Take a look at how I did at the end of one year of math training in this video 
maybe that'll get you inspired to get out there and run. See you on the next one. Yes.